Now we can look at the work done by a constant force. As a quick reminder, work is the energy transfer due to a force causing a displacement. So it's going to depend on a few different things. It's going to depend on the force, the displacement, and also the direction of that force and displacement. So here's the equation we have if we have a constant force. W is the work. F is the force, but we're not taking the full vector force, just the magnitude of the force. Similarly, delta R is the displacement magnitude. Again, right now I'm not caring about the direction. It's just how much displacement I have. Theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. So that's how we're going to incorporate in our directions at this point. Let's take a quick look at the units for that. The units for force are going to be newtons. The units for the displacement are going to be meters. Now cosine theta doesn't actually have units. After you've performed the cosine, it's just a number at that point. So putting that all together, that means we expect work to have units of newton meters. Now just like a newton was a combination of other units and it ended up being named after a scientist who had done a bunch of work on force, newton, our newton meter gets named after another scientist. And so one newton meter is one joule, where joule, J-O-U-L-E, was another scientist who did a lot of work on work in energy. Let's give a quick example here. If I've got a block and it's sliding horizontally three meters along a desktop due to a force of 10 newtons directed 25 degrees above the horizontal. So I've got my force here and my force isn't straight down but it's at an angle of 25. As it moves I then end up having a displacement of my three meters. So putting this into the equation I've got a force of 10 newtons, a displacement of 3 meters, and the angle between that force and displacement is 25 degrees. And so that gives me 27.2 newton meters. Remember, as you're doing these kind of calculations, you want to have your calculator in whatever units your angle is in. Here I'm measuring my angle in degrees, so I'd want to make sure my calculator was in degrees as well. So that's the end of our first introduction to work done by a constant force, but we're going to look at a couple other formats for it as well in the next few videos.